Hello, this is an assessment for restoration of a board grand piano made in 1924 and uh, 160 centimetres long. Now, just looking at the music stand here, it's quite plain for a board. The rest of the piano, as we'll see in a minute, is very decorative. So I'm not sure if that's an original music desk. If you're watching this and you're in the trade, perhaps you can help. Um, but it's well veneered and very uh, attractive anyway. So there's the name, name board. Board in the UK, you don't find that many grands. Uh, lots of uprights made early, much earlier than this. So this is a quite a find, really. Now, the ivory keys are in pretty perfect condition and just need, need buffing, really. I don't think any of them have come off and been stuck back on. Now, the casework has this very attractive fan uh, type of veneer. Um, just to have a quick look at that. Obviously it needs repolishing and uh, it's going to be quite spectacular when it's repolished. Once we sand this down and apply polish it'll be a different colour and we'll see some of the original colour in a second. And by the way this, um, this is a fold up middle section. You get this on some grand pianos and you can see the beautiful veneer under there too and the way they've done that in the kind of fan shape as well. And the more you look at the piano the more tasteful it is really. Um, a lot of French pianos are quite attractive um, and uh, we'll see as in a minute that this piano is also a high quality piano. Uh, looking round, there's a lot of thought gone into the veneering of this piano and on the sides too, if we go down here, beautiful fan on this right hand side and on the other side too. Uh, quite faded polish and uh, as we see on this bit here you can see uh, there's a darker colour and if we lift the lid we'll see underneath before we do that, um, looking around the left hand side of the piano, the long side, also we've got this fan veneer right the way around. Um, if you've seen this before and have repolished one of these, it would really be wonderful to hear from you uh, as to any comments you've had. Well, there's the underside of the lid. Um, if we repolish it, we probably would try and bring out more contrasting grain here, although in the video it looks quite contrasting. Um, there's a potential for even more so. Sorry, that wasn't quite in focus, but um, very tasteful veneer indeed. Um, this is a redder colour as well. I'm not so sure that we go for exactly that colour, but normally we just do a natural polish um, according to the colour of the piano. So I think it might be a little bit lighter in colour. A major issue with this piano is loose tuning pins, and uh, indeed they are loose. So let's have a listen to the tone as well. Underneath that looseness there's a very rich sound, and on the break point here, very even sound, incredibly out of tune, and it's about uh, well, at least 10 beats flat. But right through you can hear a nice full tone, right through to the very top. The hammers have been replaced, as we'll see in a minute, and uh, a very, very good job's been done on them as well. Now, I have tried resetting the, the pins, that's uh, holding this and then tapping the top, just to tap the pin in a bit, roughen the wood up and see if it's tight. And it does, they do tighten up, just trying to find out whether we need to replace the rest plank or not. Um, putting bigger pins in will certainly make them tight, um, but there's a question about the rest plank, which we'll see in a minute anyway. So the rest plank has got cracks on the top. Now they might just be superficial cracks. Um, so it, again, it may not be necessary to replace the rest plank. Now the soundboard has a, a crack going across it here. That shows it's dried out. So it's obviously been drying out on this piano. Um, as we mentioned many times before, it's, um, it's a cosmetic thing to have this crack on here because the sound travels and the other uh, gets carried across the soundboard by the ribs. So looking underneath the soundboard, you can see the cracks here, but you see the ribs going the other direction. That's what's where the sound is transporting the sound across the piano. Um, this could cause buzzing, the, the crack. Obviously, if we're going to restring the piano, we'll also restore the soundboard at the same time. Uh, someone's put a hydrosil unit in here. Uh, and if you're listening to this and you're a fan of hydrosil, the problem is that people tend to forget them. That needs putting in the bath every, say, month or so to fill it up. Uh, so they can be effective, but they do tend to get forgotten. That's the problem. Now, while we're under here, the pedal mechanism is working well. There's no noise at all on it. Uh, you can see there's a bit of wear here. There's a bit of dip there, so 
obviously we're going to recondition the pedal as well when we restore the piano. There's not much evidence of wear on this right hand pedal, in fact much less than I expected considering the hammers have been replaced on the piano. I'd expect to see more wear on the pedals so I don't know if these were replaced as well. There's not really much leg room here um, so as the pedals are very low, as mentioned on other videos, as low as Beckstein pedals, which are usually some of the, my favoured favoured pianos, really low. You could put one inch caster cups under there. Those are screws from the action, by the way. Um, but uh, so you could do that, and this wouldn't be too high. One inch higher, they'll still be quite playable. So if you have got a problem, uh, the piano's a bit, the, the legroom's not not enough. Then um, certainly that could be increased. I bought to put on um, these uh, extra copper wound uh, with, with the three strings. Uh, that is a sign of a manufacturer that's trying to make a really good piano. So uh, f obviously this is a small grand, so the bass isn't fantastic, but if you listen to... For a small piano, that's a very, very good bass, and these are nicely combed as well. So an attempt to make a really good piano, um, a really good small piano, uh, in the 20s and 30s there were lots of small pianos made because there were already lots of larger ones um, around in, in, in the Europe so there wasn't such a need for larger ones so that's the era of the small piano. Just to look at these, these are individually um, individual strings which is supposed to make the, the more stable tuning. Um, a lot of manufacturers they go round so you'd have this string going round the pin and back up again so if you broke a string you could use the same one rather than have to replace it um, but this is a sign of uh, someone to make again uh, wanting to make a really good piano now I'm just going to take the action out of this piano and before you do you have to check that all the hammers are down that one is as you can see if that's left like that when you pull the action out the hammer will break off and I'm mentioning this because as you'll see in a minute I've made that mistake myself so we can just push that down with a, in this case with that screw and it'll needs to be down and then we can pull the action out without a problem. Now the first time we took this action out I was very conscious of that um, but the action is very very tight um, and the first thing I do is to make it easier to get in and out, much nicer to work on then um, and uh, maybe weaken the springs, I think certainly lubricate the, the bed of, um, we use some um, furniture polish lubricant seems to be the best one for that and uh, if you're in the trade and have got a better idea please let us know but uh, I put the action back in pulled it out again and let's see what happened so as the action was so hard to get out I was concentrating on that I made the, did the cardinal sin as it were and broke the hammers off this is this one here and that's broken off in such a way that we'll have to um, we'll have to chamfer this in order to uh, to get it to fit properly it won't we can't just stick it back on because it's too too clean and let's make an angle as it were and put that back on it's something we obviously can do and would you believe it I should broke the top one off as well that's broken off in a, in a different way and it's going to be easier to repair so there's the top hammer um, we all make mistakes but to make that mistake twice uh, I can't believe it perhaps it was a senior moment now as I mentioned these hammers have been replaced and they're they're good hammers um, and they're nice and soft down here, they get harder as you go up, uh, which you've mentioned before in videos, and they need a bit of voicing, obviously, but if we look at this one, it checks nicely, and if I, as I release the check by lifting my finger a bit on the key, it's bouncing up nicely, maybe a bit too harshly, but um, that's, that's excellent. There's hardly anywhere on the back check either. Um, so the action pretty much gets a clean bill of health. We'd often replace this and possibly you might think if you're a technician watching the video you'd replace that roller but it does feel really good actually um, perhaps slightly notchy we can certainly lubricate it with some French chalk um, and that would be a good idea there's plenty of graphite on there um, just to see what we're going to do we probably lubricate the central rail here um, the touch is not too bad on the piano actually it's pretty much I haven't measured it but it's pretty much as it should be now I'm questioning the rest plank, which is the main issue on the piano. As you can see here, that's been scraping against the rest plank. Um, so there's something going wrong there. So there's the underside of the rest plank. And you can see the scrape marks very clear. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this rest plank's not the original. Um, and 
if you're a wood person, perhaps you can tell me what that wood is, because I'd guess probably wrongly. I suppose beech or maple, but if you are a wood person, please let me know. My colleague obviously would be able to do that in our restoration team, but it's, they're very bad scrape marks. So uh, obviously it's going in and out. That That's one of the reasons my excuses for breaking the hammers. It was hard to get the action out. Um, obviously that will make the action come out easier when that could, could sand this off. But I'm wondering about replacing this rest plank, though it has been replaced. So maybe just replacing the tuning pins would be enough. So that's a decision to make. Obviously, uh, it costs more to replace the rest plank, and especially on a small piano, it might be difficult to get it out. Um, looking at the dampers here, you can see some oxidization in the leads. Now, we would very often replace leads when they're oxidized like that. You can scrape this oxidization off and then uh, lacquer over it to stop it happening anymore. But often it's cracked the wood as well. Um, the team will have a look at that. Uh, you can see if we look along, you see lots of oxidization all the way along generally, so right to the other end. And whether it's cracked the wood or not, we'll have to have a look. That could well have done, in which case they they would automatically get replaced, I think, these days. Um, by the way, there's no evidence of, of moth in the piano. They've got two felts on. We don't like putting two felts, one on top of the other normally, because it makes it a bit squashy. But we'll have to see, maybe that does actually work well. So just going back to the rest blank again, you can see that it's flush here and then it goes down. Uh, so it's actually thicker. Uh, I can't think that that would be the original. Um, don't know if it needs to be that thick because you can't see the tuning pins touching it at all. Um, so let's say that's been replaced. But if you are in the trade and like to comment, please do. Uh, just to finish off with, well, uh, the down weight, that's actually 56 grams, which surprises me. Well, I think it's not going down partly because the hammers, I didn't mention that the, the hammer hinges are, are tight, so they need lubricating too. And then we may need to reweight the keys, but I would be surprised if we also lubricate, we dry lubricate the, the centre rail, then probably that will go down, but it's not going down with 56 grams. And it, well, the bit of encouragement it, it is, so they're a bit uneven, so we're obviously going to try and weight them and when this is finished there's no reason why it shouldn't feel as accurate as a new piano so that's an assessment for restoration of a a board um, 160 gram piano made in 1924 and a very high quality instrument I'm very impressed by it what impresses me the underlying tone here but obviously it definitely needs it's got a problem with the with, with the tuning pins being too loose and I think from what we've seen, we do need to replace the rest plank, unfortunately. So it's quite an expensive job, but well worth doing. The piano's a high quality piano and the casework as I've shown at the beginning is uh, really special. So it's gonna be a delight to, to work on this piano um, trying to decide what really needs doing. The hammers are very good, apart from the couple that I broke earlier. Um, they're in very, very good condition and we can easily obviously repair those. Um, Sorry, it's a bit of a pain to listen to this, um, but uh, the underlying tone, and right down to the bass, is very lush and beautiful. So it's going to turn out an excellent instrument. The keyboard needs waiting a bit, um, so that'll be, we'll set that to be slightly lighter than average, I think, about 48 grams, just to give make it a nice piano to play if you're not studying seriously. It's nice to have a slightly lighter action. Thank you very much for listening. The work's now been completed on the piano and so let's have a look at the case first. So that's been totally repolished, French polish, T takes about 70 hours, 30 coats of French polish applied thinly and then uh, it's waxed at the end so that there's not too much shine and you can see the grain it's a lovely rosewood grain here. So rosewood always does look with a great contrast. You can tell rosewood as the black lines and then the very light. It's a huge contrast in rosewood. That's why it's so popular with pianos. Um, so this is a board from 1924. So it's a bit later than most of the rosewood pianos are. But um, I'm really glad they chose rosewood because it has meant that the repolishing has been a delight to do really. The, the polish has been applied without any added colour, so it's literally natural. 
polish. It's the natural colour of the piano. It's very changed from the faded look that it had before. Um, this I shall put a jump link to where you can see exactly the same pass of the piano, so you can compare what it used to look like. But this, this is uh, the contrast is staggering, really, and we're so grateful to be given the task of doing this piano because uh, it's going to go over it in quite slowly, just so you can drink in the, the appearance of it. We, it's been delight for the polisher to do it and then for us to see as well. French pianos, I think we've had one other very, very decorative piano like this, which was French by Gavo, and that's a bit more common. Board is not such a common make, certainly of that age, 1924. Um, there are older board pianos. In the UK, you do find quite a lot of board pianos round about the turn of the 19th century. That is uh, around 1900, 1895, that kind of date. We'll just have a look at the serial numbers of board in a minute, but let's go right through the whole case first, enjoying it really, because it's obviously been a tremendous work of art making this piano in the first place. So French pianos can be quite decorative, and uh, the Gavo, which we is, is more common in the UK, um, that's a beautiful piano too, but I've never seen anything like this, and I haven't seen any board grands in the UK at all, mostly small uprights really. The legs are, are very tasteful as well. And there's the lyre, very low pedals, which is useful because I think I mentioned in the first half, it's, there's not a huge amount of leg room here. So you could raise them up with uh, half inch thick casters or even inch thick and you still wouldn't have the pedals too high. So if you were tall, that would be a possibility. And just want to one, show you one more feature. And that is that this has a folding, middle, middle section folding, separately here. There are some grands made in the 20s like this and it seemed to be quite popular to do that. I'm not quite certain why it was done. Obviously you can then pull out the music stand like that and this one has a different fold. I'll show you the back of that in a second but my feeling is one of the reasons they did that is so that you don't get a point here because if you have this bit um, normally that's attached to the um, you know it goes back in one piece so then you've got a point there and uh, not very nice to be to uh, encounter that point when you're walk, walking around. So it's quite useful to have that folding down, I think. But it's not that commonly done, and obviously uh, makes the appearance different on the top lid. So there's the back of this music stand, and it, sl it folds down like this, which is uh, certainly something I haven't seen before. Well, maybe I have, but don't remember. Um, I suppose. One thing about this is you can't really adjust the angle of it if you want to, but they've chosen a very good angle, so that makes up for that. Now, the inside the acoustic side of the piano, as we call it, has been fully restored and uh, tried to make the frame colour as authentic as possible. But it's re redone. Uh, new tuning block. We have changed the tuning block, and that was the most important thing that needed doing, really, to put right. Um, new dampers here, and... The strings we mentioned, they're individually strung, uh, so that's I won't go on too long because uh, the first part of the video was very long. But just wanted to see you the show you the, the finished product on the inside here. Um, so we mentioned that they've taken a lot of care and thought about this piano, so it's meant to be a high quality, very high quality piano, which it is. So if we look at the string length there, we, we made them a little bit the copper a little bit longer and prefer to have less of a gap here than it had originally. So that's one thing that maybe we've improved slightly. Uh, and we'll listen to the tone of it in a minute. If we look at the piano atlas here, we see that Board um, did produce, it says here, as many as 4,000 pianos annually. That was at their height. I think we're going to find that's around about 1899. There's 3,000 difference there, isn't there? And um, 2,000 there. So um, really three 2,000 pianos will be what they produced during that period of time. And then later on here in the 1924, which is this one's dating, that's uh, producing, it looks like, less than 500 pianos because they go up in 500 increments. So uh, less than 500 pianos a year. Whereas in the turn of the century, where we find a lot of small over-damper boards in the UK, 
Uh, they've got problems with tuning pins very often being loose, but they're very sweet sounding pianos. Uh, that's the ones that we find round about this period. And I've never come across a uh, board grand in the UK, 1924, 1920, that sort of age. If you're familiar with them, we'd love to learn some more about, the, about them. Now, before the restoration, we saw that the, a major problem was that this rest plank here was actually catching, or well, the action was catching the rest plank. You see, there's a good gap, as there is in... Most pianos, well all pianos have got a good gap, and small pianos have less of a gap, but there should be at least that kind of gap, uh, and the rest plank won't sag down. This is a delignate rest plank. You can always tell delignate rest plank because they, they rather difference of colour in them, um, and you can see the laminates here as well, actually. You can see that there, there's some definite laminates. Delignates is a very laminated rest plank, as we mentioned many times before. Schwander action, which is very common in Europe, and the felts have been replaced here, Sorry, not these felts here, but the, the felts in the keys and also the felts under the keys. The felts under the keys have been replaced with just one uh, one beige, one felt here, and, and instead of two, we said that was a bit squashy, and then obviously levelled up with um, uh, cardboard washers underneath and paper washers too. Now the hammers have been refaced um, to... Another, they produce very sweet sound, as we'll hear in a minute, and... Uh, the, the one that was broken here has been repaired. You can't really notice the repair. It's, it's a slightly different different colour of the glue there. And the one at the top too has been repaired. And I did talk about the rollers. They have actually been replaced. And also we've got talc on them, or French chalk or um, Teflon powder. You can use any of those, as we've said many times before. And it does feel a lot smoother. That's, that's The smoother to the action's quite dependent on the roller and obviously that's raised the hammer up a little bit too so it's well regulated the right hammer blow and the springs are working beautifully as I release the back check by lifting my finger a bit off the key it should go upwards which it does and really positively so that it doesn't actually hit the string twice but and doesn't feel strong in the fingers but is enough to last for a long time basically so as positive as you can get it and now let's listen to the tone of it and compare it with the Beckstein. This is not a real fair comparison in a way because the Beckstein's a lot longer, it's six foot long. And the treble... It only has 85 keys this, so I couldn't go up to the top C. So obviously the board is a shorter piano, but for a 160 centimetres piano, that's a very, very good bass. And very clear right down to the bottom. And of course, the bottom notes you tend to play in the octave anyway. So that's the board grand piano, 160 centimetres long, made in 1924. With restorations now being completed, uh, both repolishing and the casework is quite extraordinary, I think you'll agree. And we're so pleased to have had the task of doing this piano because not only does it look so beautiful, it also sounds exquisite too. And the touch is as good as any, any piano. I'd like to say it's as good as a new piano. And I don't see any reason why you shouldn't buy an older piano if it's really if the touch is made for practicing on it should be 50 grams down weight uh, roughly and then uh, plus or minus two grams and then you can learn on this piano and won't get a shock when you play on a concert grand. So we reweight the keys obviously to get get them exactly right. Very fluid to play. If you 
you've got a grand piano and you'd like it repolished, then please write to us, info at robertspianos.com, and uh, let us know about it and we'll see if we can help. The French polishing takes about 70 hours, so it's not, not cheap, unfortunately, because um, um, after polishing it, we also then do antique waxing, just so it's not too reflective. And as you can see, this one is particularly special. We just sort of focus on that as a last thing we'll do because that, that's been a particular feature and that's why we believe this has been made in sections so that this can be shown off while the music stands up. So I hope that's been helpful and uh, you've enjoyed what, looking at the piano as much as we've enjoyed polishing it. Thank you very much for listening.